gets his hand on a really early game pick like Renekton. We always have to talk about it. It seems like it's always the, the large elephant in the room or the croc for that instance. Um, it's going to be a major point of focus, and his TP timings are stellar as well. Excellent. Well, that said, it's going to be our LCK casters taking us away. So, Papa and Atlas, let's go. Thank you very much, Frosker. And we almost got on a little bit earlier than you'd like. And that's exciting because I know they were trying to get over to Papa with his glorious little pin. Yeah, I'm wearing the KT pin. You know, mostly analysts like to emotionally distance themselves from KT Rolster. Getting too excited about KT Rolster oh, no, tends to lead to bad things. But today they're playing their two games. I'm going to wear the pin. I'm going to believe in KT Rolster. I'm not going to get excited just yet, Alice. Maybe later in yes. the game. Please don't There's get a lot of optimism here. I mean, they KT talked Rolster. about... Because they've, they've, there is that matchup, right? It is Mata against his old team. There is a lot of mismatches. Mm -hmm. Let Me coming in is actually pretty big, I think, for the side of Orange. Because I've always been a Let Me fan from the old days when I cast the LPL. So I'm, there's some optimism for me around him. But because it's Smeb as his opposition today, the, I think you need to get a top lane counter pick for Let Me. Otherwise, the headaches will never stop if Smab gets a good matchup. It'll be very difficult. We are going to jump straight into champion select, though, ladies and gentlemen. RNG versus KT Rolster. I'm looking forward to Xiaohu versus Pawn because I was there in China commentating the final that we saw the B-roll of when Xiaohu, the little tiger, evolved into the big tiger up against Pawn, and that was a destructive series. You saw how excited Mata was, but now on a different team. Now, the champions who really want to keep away from KT Rolster outside of the obvious were specifically to me, Caitlyn, Thresh, and the Rumble. Now, the Rumble has made it through picks and bans. Galio and Thresh had to be banned on the red side because RNG will be playing this best of one on blue side. So the jungle pool is down Zach and Elise. That's pretty sad. Rek'Sai is taken as the preeminent jungler. We're going to look to the side of KT Rolster, and the champion that has undone <laughs> them recently is going to be locked in, Deft and specifically the Callista Rakan that's been a recurring story point in this tournament. A position of power has been taken, and well, the Rek'Sai is there, but Score is one of the best Gragas players in the world. Happy to just jump on that. Yeah, so happy just to get on utility as well. Score so, so good at pathing around the jungle, getting himself into positions that your opponents aren't going to be able to produce. And what are KT Rolster good at? Getting themselves into positions where they're massively ahead in the early game. This season, in Korea, in the LCK, which right now is perhaps the strongest it has ever been. KT, a number one at gold difference at 15, with an average advantage of 1,200 gold. For context, SKT is at a third of that, under 400. They have been blitzing early game. Their transitions to mid game recently have been poor. Early in the seasons were actually pretty good. Has, it hasn't been a source of strength for them, but it hasn't been a headache like in spring season. So we have to see, have the, can they shake away the two reverse sweeps recently? Focusing on the draft, Corky is taken by Zhao. This is so huge. But you do see that Pawn goes for one of the kind of new school of thought of how to deal with double AD carry comps. Victor is one of those champions that early will not have lane pressure. Famously will rush the 1250 gold, get the first hex score, just wave clear. But in team fights, Victor can pop AD carries. It's going to be a double AD carry comp, you have to imagine. Go a Lich Bane, get a bit of ability power, and you can one rotation. So Victor, it's not the Cassiopeia that I think will grow to be a great answer specifically to the Corky, but it is the Victor that has been one of the cornerstones of Pawn's champion pool. This season, he has done very comfortably on Victor. Yeah, and it was actually part of the Pawn redemption story as well. I mean, Pawn was fumbling a little bit earlier on, and when he found his stride again, it was actually bringing that Victor back into the meta. We are going to see some bands. Will we see a rumble band? Though, because there's three top side bands, like you say, but the rumble is kind of the one left open here when you're looking at dueling top lanes. Renekton is banned. There is the rumble band. Where the top lane goes from here is interesting. You could just take support and give Smeb the counter pick. That's probably. Braum is available. Percentage move take, like you say, Mata has played a lot of Braum. I'm sad we're robbed from seeing him on his thresh that he is in form on. What a jerk. This if is, he's not going to lock this in. It's he, a Mako favorite. You're not against Mako. You're not against Mako. Yeah, but it's Def. Def just wanted to go oh for the mana pick. And they God. go, there interestingly, go. for the Alistair into Rakan, a matchup that was debuted by Gorilla yeah. in recent weeks. The Alistair can comfortably get through the lane. Most things can lane against Rakan. It's the team fights where things get hectic. Both. The engage of Alistair is well known, but also just headbutting a Corky away to stop him from doing damage could be relevant as well. Yeah, it could be massive. And of course, we know Marta to be roaming around the map where, and whenever he wants. And that is going to be Camille locked in for Let Me Up towards the top side of the map. 
Smeg with the counter pick opportunity unless he wants to take top cow. So many of them are gone though. As you uh, go back to yep. 2015 for a second there, but it was so the many. Other options, Gragas, so that's back a bit as well. You could go grab this top. Interestingly, you can just cast her out of the Hextech ultimatum. Yep. The oldest school counter pick available, amusingly, is Singed, which we've seen <laughs> Huni run on in the spring season. I'm very interested to see what they decide to do with Smab is why for he's happy to stay out of the fight. He sees a victory and he's like, I don't want to get popped by you. He's just trying to stay back and jump onto the gin. When it comes to dueling top laners, so many of them have been taken away. Cannon is largely deprioritized in Korea. Been, yeah. And it's going to be just jumping on the Jace here. It's plenty of lane power, but also the sort of lane where Let Me can run away from it with a couple of ganks. And we'll see whether Let Me is going to be able to get that. MLXG has been known to gank topside quite often, but MLXG is going to be under a microscope as score. Haven't seen him a lot in the international scene, but he's always been toted as one of the best, if not the best jungler in the world, multiple occasions throughout his career. Just has never been on the team to get him there. And that's kind of the strange thing. Shaw made it to 2015 Worlds, but he was spoken about by me especially and other analysts as the best jungler in the world. Just not present, not there to be evaluated in a snapshot in time, which is what an international tournament always represents. Finally gets to jump on his Gragas at a tournament, guaranteed to play today, and at least one more match day. Score wants to grow his legend. Winning Rift Rivals is not the same as winning Worlds. KT came together to shoot higher, to win the World Championships. They get a bit of a preview. They get to see yep. how they travel as a five-man unit outside of Korea. This is a very important tournament for KT. Recent form, not their way. Expectation through the roof. RNG coming off a victory is going to be a stiff test, and there's a lot of fun picks to talk about as well. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, Martyrs Alistair we did discuss, but Deft, a player who struggled on Callista at the beginning when she first came out. He was in uh, China on EDG, actually in the final, of course, that you saw the B-roll of but didn't manage to get the Callista looking fantastic, but then grew into one of the best Callista players that we have ever seen. It was with Mako being enabled on things like the Alistair. They played that lane so, so many times. Now it's going to be Mata moving around the map, getting himself in amongst it. And we'll see whether RNG can remember Mata's tendencies and play against him because Xiaohu, he definitely knows. MLXG, he definitely knows. They are prepared for what is going to be coming their way, but we'll see whether they've prepared enough because KT, when they're in form, especially in game ones, Papa Smithy, they look terrifying. And both teams are playing with hot fire in the early game. Predictably, KT, they were never going to go for a tank top. I wasn't even putting one second of thought into oh, yeah. it being a Gragas top lane. It was going to be a fighter. The only one available that he wanted to jump on was the Jace. Very much the mid game. Two items on Deft, a second item onto Pawn. Would mean explosions for the side of RNG, but RNG have Trinity Force Corky on the way. They have the Camille split push as well. I feel like in the late game, they have a lot more options that are reliable compared to KT, but that feels like it's literally a soundboard point about KT Rolster. They're not interested in 45 minute stalemates. They want to take the game early, and they have a draft that can do it. Yeah, they're doing the very best they can. I do like the Alistair pick into this draft specifically. They saw the Rakan very, very early. Not a lot of lane pressure. Of course, Alistair, the reason he's fallen out was because not a lot of lane pressure. So going to be enabled for Marta to try and get through that lane. And let's talk about what they do have, because compared to a lot of the KT drafts, where it's Rumble top lane and no tank, Gragas, frontline tank, initiator, Fate's Call allows Marta to be a supreme initiator. The yep. Fate's Call into already just the pulverize from Alistair is a bouncy castle in and of its own. So they have a lot of initiation here where if they do get their standard 1200 gold lead in the early game, they can also force things and grow a lead compared to their other comps where sure, if all your vision is correct, all your ro rotations are correct, you can grow leads. Having initiation as well and having it fit the meta is important for KT because it makes them even more damn potent than they already are. Well, you can see MLXG actually towards this bottom side, considering going for a vertical jungle as Score takes down his red buff finally, is going to move towards that blue side. But MLXG just taking that Rift Scuttler for the moment. Let's see if he hits level three. Could be going for the experienced Quint, though he's in pretty commonly. Hasn't killed the big uh, Raptor just yet. So just level two there. As Marta just hits level two, an instant headbutt. Yeah, that's going to be the boot back onto Ming there as well. He's just going to have to walk out. The exhaust, exhaust comes in. They want to try and take down Def, but there are so many sticks into Y4. The Ren goes down. He's down to sub 100 health, but he still gets knocked up. 
after the flash. The knock-up to follow with the grand entrance and first blood to MLXG. They're looking for the cow after it as well. They want to pick up the beef. So now Martyr's going to move back underneath that turret and it's all gone disastrously wrong. And targeting death is so smart because he's so emotional on the rim. And they had so much time to really stop with the 2v2 and pull back after they changed targets from the support to the AD carry, and yet Deft wanted to step forward, wanted to show that he is still a relevant AD carry force on the international stage. And there's no other way to put it. He was sucked in, he was baited into an engage as Rek'Sai had the most natural pathing in the world, having taken down the Rift Scuttler. The Alan's Desk was talking about the pawn question marks, and sure, that was true at the start of the season. Certainly, it was the story of spring season, but pawn has been pretty good and pretty reliable on Galio, Oriana, the victor. The win rate's not right there. He's been a pretty deft hand, but it's the actual man, it's Deft who has been the person who has let them down considerably, was outclassed by Sangyun, was yeah. outclassed by Bang in their last two series. So getting in the head of Deft, who is an emotional player and then some, is a really big yield. So first blood, that's what RNG would have wanted in any case, but getting it onto Deft, no summoners onto the Callista, and just an Alistair for a laning presence, the headaches do begin for Deft. Yep. This is uh, terrifying, but it's what happens now that's the real question mark. Has Deft grown? Is he able to counteract what is all of that uh, emotion? I should use another word to describe the situation. But a T emotion, word? Yeah, it's a T word. Terrificism? Yeah, terrificism. <laughs> that's exactly what I was thinking. Our synergy is really growing. <laughs> that's not even a word. We love finishing each other's it. sandwiches. <laughs> oh, God. That's a deep one. I like it. Okay, Deft and Martyr now clearing out this wave and we'll at least get the shove forward. At least for the moment, Deft can be happy with, with having the uh, CS advantage, but that is going to be evened out by Y4, unless he misses every one of these creeps, which uh, he's going to. Oh no, last one Got it. picked up, nailed it. Okay, there we are, so we're even. So MLXG will take down this blue buff. Wondering whether he was going to give this blue buff over to Xiaohu there in the mid lane, but decides that he's not going to, just wants the experience to move forward, very late blue buff. It's an evolution of the meta. Uh, this was a pretty common thing, was giving away first blue and then having the disconnected blue takes. Top lane. Yeah, they're looking for it. Score is here, though. As he oh! gets the black body slam, bops him into the face, and now Smeb, he's going to go to the skies and pick up the double. Oh, pathing, oh, pathing. Pathing, that was not a great one, but thankfully this is why you drink your potions, ladies and gentlemen. And KT, two kills on the board, and that's the answer to the bottom lane. And pressure. that's why everyone wants to believe in KT Rolster, because in Individually, pound for pound, they have insane ceilings. Completely outplayed RNG, who thought they had the drop. No drop necessary. Double kill over to the side of Smeb. He's going to rush play the Rune King, have lane presence, and have it very, very quickly. And that means KT have got some momentum already. Yeah, and this was the question marks when KT weren't looking good, because that was when Smeb wasn't at his peak performance level. Well, I'll have you guys know that Smeb has looked like a god from a different planet. We're going to so see the replay season. here. So consider what happens. It looks like obvious pathing coming in through the Rex. He gets the information now that things are going to happen. Flashes oh. the second part as score commits at the same time. They also juggle in. The pathing almost makes Smab look like a very silly Billy, but he'll get away as well. Get a massive item purchase. Walks into a cloth armor and Doran's shield, Camille, with a bilge water and most of the way to play the Ruin King, and Let oh Me's God. life sucks. It does. MLXG's life would suck too, as Smev's gonna come down, clear out this vision ward, or the control ward, depending on what you wanna call it. As now there's the headbutt pulverized, Def gets the slow, the exhaust, come, the ignite, sorry, comes down as Y4, he's in trouble, Marta grabs the kill. Somehow after the other end comes in, Def so good at threading the resets with the minions. There's going to be KT answering back on the bottom side. Now, questions for Deft. I hope that that is going to answer it for you with that extra kill. I mean, KT is going for the all-out approach here, invading every single objective. Even Marta walks up so they can guarantee a Raptor. You look at the buy, Y4, if you saw for a second there on the player cam, you know, had to adjust himself, looked visibly annoyed at giving up a kill on his answering buy as a ninja tabi. Boots 2 is a very common rush in most Jin lanes, but against Alistair as well, having no combat stats, three pushing lanes, MLXG, it's all on him to find the right spots, and he's found top lane. Well, in goes Let Me, they are gonna get the silence down. Trade kill? Smep trying to get that trade, but smacks him away, not quite enough with that last auto attack, and Let Me 
going to be able to lock down the kill in response. And KT want to play this with three pushing lanes and also their jungler invading. There will be very reliable spots for MLXG as Rek'Sai, who can cheat past Vision anyway with the tunnel systems for to come around and really focus down different lanes. This is the sort of game where MLXG has to return to previous form. But to before 2016, MSI was looking like a great jungler. And sure, I know the best time is score. Just has a party cast. <laughs> Too late on that one. Knew what he was going for. But MLXG should have a lot of options in this game to coordinate with his lanes. Cannot feel sorry for himself after failing on the top lane gank because KT want to present opportunities. You see Ninja Tabi Jin. You see how many items are loaded on the Jace. There's no ambiguity. We're playing this game if you're KT Rolster under the enemy turrets. Yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. And Score, of course, has the pick of the litter as far as where he wants to go now as well to try and get that counter gank pressure. Will they be able to get the vision down to make sure that they know where MLXG and is? That's, and that's the fun game is that, honestly, it's probably best for Score to just be in the face of MLXG at all points while his lanes are winning around him as MLXG's back top lane. Yep, Smep doesn't have flashback available. He's going to boot away MLXG. It's going to be the CC not available anymore as there's the ultimate. Smep's still alive looking for Let Me. Almost gets it. The minions still angry with the Camille, but not going to be enough. And that is two deaths in a row for Smep going over aggressive once again. And Scott doesn't have ult this time, so just enter lane and pick up CS. This gives a bit more experience and gold onto the side of Let Me in particular. Needs the help, Smab doesn't have flash up. That was with Hextech Ultimatum on cooldown. So a bonus kill, you'd say, over to the side of RNG and trying to slow down the man who could honestly have just decided the game himself. This could very much have been a nine minute Blade the Ruin King if he was just farming and harassing down the Camille. Well, now Xiaohu, this is the guy that we were looking at in RNG's on the previous again. series. On the Corky again, not sitting at four odd kills here at the 10 minute mark into the game. This time, however, still has this power pick, still has the Ultra Spiker. It's basically Ramus as far as item spikes are concerned. He gets one every single time he completes something and even has one now with the Sheen. He's opting out of completing his Hex Drinker for more priority on the early Trinity Force. Shahu knows that he has to get work done in the early Fates to mid Yeah, Fate Skull's going to come down. Flash easily gained Turn around. that ultimate. Marta not going to get knocked up by the grand entrance, though. Now KT moved themselves back. That was the easiest summoner spell of their lives. And it's also that history between Shahu and Pawn. They played in China for a very long yeah. time against each other on some of the preeminent squads. EDG versus RNG definitely represented in that matchup. And of course, picking the Corky away from Pawn is massive. He's always loved that pick ever since it moved towards that mid lane. Deft, of course, probably the best Corky player that we've ever seen towards the bottom side, but that was a very long time ago. Yeah, when I was casting LPL in 2015 Springer, it was the Deft Corky, but last year it was more about the Pawn Corky with the meta changing. Yeah. It's cool to see that they uh, still remain on the same team, no matter what. Trading Corkies. Yeah, trading Corkies. Always in the meta, one lane at a time. Mm-hmm. The inevitability of always being a Corky meta at some point. It's worth noting that Jahu will have a tougher job in this particular game when it comes to making the cross map plays, given that Vision Supremacy is kind of gift wrapped to the side of KT when you have lanes winning in terms of pressure in all three at times. Mid lane can be equalized out by the Corky, but largely going to be three winning lanes to the side of KT. Looking for their first neutral objective and the Rift Scuttler is going to be halted. I guess they saw Rakan pushing up and consider their options. Yeah, actually looking for the kills rather than taking the dragon just there. Of course, Mountain Drake holds a little He'll bit more weight. He'll use my off screen. <clears throat> okay. I guess it wasn't that important. They're going to go back home. The flash from Ming there as well. They were going for the Jin, knowing that his flash was down. Now they're just going to move back, potentially go towards that dragon, but they're not going to opt into it. I would have thought that the priority on the Mountain Drake would actually be quite high for KT this game with the fact that they do have the Callista. They've got so many opportunities to disengage from Baron fights, things like that, with the Gragas and Marta, of course, with the Headbutt. There are so many opportunities to set up around these river objectives. I mean, the Mountain Drake's basically diamonds to both sides, Atlas. It is hey, a true. Trinity Force Corky and also Let Me on Split Push Duty on the Camille as well, so... I think both sides equally prioritize this. Xiao just goes in aggressively. Yeah, Ming's looking for it. Actually, Flash going to be used by Pawn. Ming didn't have that one, of course, but had to respect the quickness. Nice little lane gank. Something that we don't see very often from the side of the Rakan, but played it well. Marta spotted out on the top side, so won't be able to just jump in and try to help out Jace, who's been frustrated with the last two kills being going against him. 
Yep, just going to be standing underneath the turret this time around. The cow support, definitely good. God, that Moo Cow skin is so good. It's a chroma for it as well, so it's oh. extra silly. Oh, silly. Mid lane. Yeah, there's the flash knockoff. Font, a lot of damage coming in there. As There's the Void Rush. And Xiao, who's going to be able to grab that kill? Tanking up the turret just fine at the same time. We are going to have Blade of the Rune King picked up by Smeb, but I mean, that's the only good news story for KT after that dive. And the extra damage coming through on the Rex side makes those turret dives even more potent as a Cinder Hulk for survivability. And the missing health damage allows them to take down Pawn, and the game's starting to go back towards the side of RNG. MLG has been able to be in position for all four of the kills that have come to RNG. They turn onto that Mountain Drake. We said it's Diamonds, that means that KT, they probably want to contest if they can. Yeah, there is certainly a Fates Call available if Mata wants to go in. Does get himself a lot of damage as Ming has to get himself out of there. The Trample's gonna grab he got him, the and he steals the dragon! We say that Mata giveth, Mata taketh away, and he's given it this game. That is massive. Score's gonna be able to take down Y4 as well. He either trampled or <laughs> damn auto attack just slapped him by the side of the head. It wasn't one of his this teammates Mata's when they disrespected him. It was a Mountain Drake picked up by the side of Mata. That goes so much against the grain of the last few minutes for RNG. Man. <laughs> what the heck was that? Was it a pulver? Please tell me it was at least a goddamn I, I, pulverize. I don't think it was pulverize. <laughs> Atlas, he already used Headbutt Pulverize, and it was a level 6 Alistair, doesn't have the oh, cooldowns no. to do it again. So, uh, Smite was a little bit too early, we'd say, by MLXG, and, you know, if you're going to make the storyline, the narrative, giveth and taketh the way, that's been MLXG in summer season. Very at true. big games, at small games. Mountain Drake for both these teams can be a breaking point, so they engage, and it's just a 2v3 as they walk in, ignite enough to take him down, and it was a trample, a damn trample <laughs> from... The Moo Cow was enough to take <laughs> down the Drake. Stop laughing, Atlas. This is serious. This is international competition. This is a serious disaster for RNG, Papa Smithy. That is, it, it deserves to be laughed at purely because that definitely shouldn't have happened. That calculation from MLXG must have been extraordinarily close to being a genius maneuver. But, uh, oh, goodness me. Okay, so RNG attempting to reset after the problem. They do have the item spike, the first one. For Xiaohu there in the mid lane, Trinity Force is done. We've got Tiamat and Sheen. Good item breakpoint for Let Me there as well. But Smeb, he's still continuing to push ahead. He's currently only 37 CS ahead at 15 minutes. Um, he could probably do better than that. And the gold values are pretty good. It's hard to kind of chastise Smeb so much when there was the I top was lane being camp. Sarcastic, most definitely. She certainly should be, you know, at least more close to even. And it's a 2 1 and 1 Camille now. I mean, the item lead is not massive, though, as Mart has gone for a walk. Yeah, Grand Entrance is going to land onto the Gragas. That's the only one, but good CC coming out of RNG. The disengage with the cask is there. A score is going to fall down. MLXG, he's on a mission just looking for Death, who does use the flash to get himself out. Fate's call saves Mata completely as well. And then Smeb comes down. He's going to save the rest of his team, but they get the pick. Now, Mata couldn't be that far off. It was a disengage mission given that Victor is bot lane. Just wave clearing and pushing side lane Victor to get to three items. At least two is something. And Smeb's got greedy. Yeah, that was a fadeaway jump shot that he was trying to do onto MLXG. He's trying to get to the blast cone, but doesn't get there. And Xiaohu gets another kill. Two, zero, and two now is the little tiger in the mid lane. And RNG, they seem to be able to get behind him when he's playing well. And my goodness, he's playing well this tournament. And Smeb's just trying to do too much, trying to take a red buff against the flow of pressure. And as the Victor, was just wave clearing him bot, so a mistake from Smeb after a very nice double kill early. Has been things have been going against him, which may be a big problem if enough gold is loaded onto the Camille. Oh goodness, Deft is getting so aggressive now. Does have his blade of the Rune King, so the item spike is there. He's 18 CS in the lead, and he's now looking to take down this outer turret and will do so very easily as no one can take down this minion wave. Okay, KT. Playing on the front foot despite things going slightly wrong with that one pick going over to RNG. But are we happy, Atlas? Because some games oh, you have yeah. five people who stack AD and AP and you're like, give me that Inferno and it comes <laughs> out. In this game, you have two teams that are all about taking turrets and the split push. And we have a second Mountain Drake spawning. We will see another hard contest you'd imagine or maybe even an unlikely trade of an objective as big as Rift Herald or Baron for a Mountain Drake, something you never want to think about, but something where the allure of the Mountain Drake may be strong in this particular game. Victor just running down the lane with Jace. They want to take the top turret as they're trying to take the Rift Herald as well. 
Dex can just uh, put 700,000 spears into this. It's just dancing around at that lifesteal. What are we at here enough. in terms of spears? Are we not looking at the Rift Herald, Not sadly. quite 700,000 just yet. But um, he's pretty close to getting a bunch of sticks in there. It's about 1,500 damage, you'd imagine. Let's see where he uses it. Hopefully... Uh, well, yeah, that's 1,000 damage. Not bad. Easy peasy there, and the Rift Herald picked up by Pawn. They already cracked the mid lane turret. Maybe just using it to slow down the pace of the Camille may have to be the case, or try to make a big push in the mid lane. Jace is slowly shadowing Camille. Camille's on the front foot. Whoa! Okay, score. That's another party cast. Got another, was, no, uh, that actually that got the flash, flash so out of Y4. Y4. Didn't quite see him there, was watching the main screen, not the minimap. The classic play-by-play -play cast of the movie. All the action happens on the minimap, oh, Atlas. What am I doing? The Maybe featured action. At the wards. For instance, look at this control ward on the top of the map, where Pawn is right now. He's just found it, but that was a money ward. That was there for Tell a Tell me more time. about this control ward. What's it for, Atlas? Oh, it's for seeing stuff. Ah, oh, well, they're very, very good stuff. There. Thank you. This is why you could be I know, I an should... analyst in disguise. I might study the minimap, because it sounds like it's relative. I'll talk to our producer. Maybe you can sub in on the analyst desk. <laughs> Your correct. English is improving. Oh, thanks. <laughs> oh, God. That's, <laughs> that's an old one. Martin but a good proud. Martin would be proud. Okay, Def, throws down the Blade of the Ruin King. A lot of damage comes out of the Fast Bomb, but does manage to get the Valkyrie. Def demands the respect. Minions getting the turret super, super low, but that didn't end up being a big point in our first game. Item Spike starting to get their Trinity Force and Sorcerer's Shoes, but Pawn getting to play side lane hasn't put him in a CS advantage over his opponent. But when you're 0-2, being able to just casually stroll bot lane, pick up minion waves and stay competitive is good enough. They yeah. find a spot, he just went top lane this time, and it's more about the minions for Pawn, but I'll take a turret as well. Actually, Pawn sacrificing a cannon creep. That is not the Pawn way of life that I have come to know. Well, because he wants to claim a bigger prize. That'll be the Mountain Drake. Needs to be in position for that in yeah. five seconds, and no teleport for Pawn. Wow, that Rift Herald just really wanted to get to the turret, which is certainly lucky. Blade of the Rune King comes down, keeps Smeb safe. That outer turret is still alive, thank goodness. Oh, knockups are plenty. This monster's going to move past MLXG. So KT have been a bit greedy, with the Drake already spawned, only now the shops come through and they return. It is perfect Hexcore and the Sheen. So like I mentioned, they're gonna go for the pop the 80 carry build with Lich Bane second after the perfect Hexcore. They're a little bit later to put down vision around this Mountain Drake. So it won't be quite as sturdy about as much information as Marta perhaps would like in this area. The score puts down a control ward. They try to get the control. They're turning on to Ming. Yeah, Ming's in trouble actually. Throws down the There's quickness, no one's gets really... the knock up. Y4 looking for the stun, but it's Marta that soaks that one. So that is ultimate down. So this dragon fight could be a little bit of a disaster. They've now got an AD carry with no flash and no ult onto Ming. Yeah, and Ming, we've already seen the value of the quickness in denying Barons and initiation. Not having it means the threat range of Rakan needs to be respected, but nowhere near the level that we've had to see respected in some of the Callista Rakan games in game one, for example, of the day. So if they want the Drake, they can look at it. Spending more time with Victor clearing minions in bot. They're not going to put out any defense around mid lane because that's one shot away. Yep. They're going to breathe on the turret. Yeah, who grabs it. Fragus just chilling. Doesn't have full information on control wards. The oh. scanner spots him. Yep. He was actually going to sit there. Of course, the tremor sense not going to see him, but thankfully did have that sweeper. That is Ghost Blade used. Y4 is scared. And the new school of build for junglers, these tank junglers, I think we'll see even more of it when we yeah. move to the next patch. It is going to be the Runic Echo on Graga. So we, have, we don't have the Cinder Hulk buff just yet, but it is second item Knight's Vow. Cinder Hulk Knight's Vow will become, I think, the core item on both Gragas and, say, Rek'Sai, for example, to keep these AD carries alive. So already more safety. It's not the tank build we saw yesterday from D, where he was going for the Phantom Dancer into Sterics even more tank. It, it still could be Phantom Dancer. I think the Sterics Gauge. That's one I'm going to take Umbridge with, but we'll talk about that if Death goes that way. Speaking of Death. Yeah, MLXG taking a lot of damage. Rend is going to be used. MLXG takes a bit from that. Half health on the jungler and KT with two Mountain Drakes and double Blade of the Ruin King and a lot of damage out of Victor. Could go towards uh, Baron whenever they want to, but it's risky. Yeah, the disengage when the Hexag Old Maiden can come out is pretty minimal, so they're probably going to have to be a bit more careful and look for the pick rather than try to rush it down. The trickiness, even with a Ability to bounce over the back when the last cone spawns is probably not the right move there for KT. Yeah, I do want to talk about MLXG though, because a lot of the microscope was on him and about how his performance was going to be this time around. Currently 100% kill contribution. He managed to camp out Smurf to try and get Let Me Back into that matchup. This is the MLXG that we wanted to see to make this a match, Papa Smithy. 
And now moving into the late game RNG, we know that their name certainly dictates the random nature of this team, but on this form, if they are going to be this iteration of RNG, KT needs to play with respect. And we'll see how much respect, because they also need to continue to hit their timings, continue to push forward. Two items complete on depth. Will not get more powerful than this exact second. Probably a QSS next just to cement exactly where he's at. Victor will continue to scale up, but they will soon have to deal with Camille basically taking full supremacy over Smear Bin Lane, a level up already. We'll soon have Titanic Hydra and other itemization and be unable to answer her in the split push. KT continue need to need to play on the razor's edge, on the aggressive line. They cannot allow free items to go over to Camille because then it will very much get to that mid to late game where KT, they're not set up to succeed in this game. Yeah. The moment score just hanging around this Baron buff. It is going to be the aim for the moment. Let me taking a little bit of damage, but looks to be able to handle Smeb for the moment. Doesn't quite have any life steal just yet or anything like that, so the damage is a little bit more sticky. However, does does just have a lot of 1v1 potential against this man. And let me has always been that carry top lane player. I remember the first time we were casting in Pop Smithy. Oh no, there's gonna be an engage actually. The quickness comes in from Ming, trying to Death's charm hitting. everyone up, but there's the boot back. It's going to be an ultimate used defensively and actually saved Ming's life. Curtain Call comes in and now they're looking to take down Mata. Not going to be able to. And everyone gets out of the way of the Curtain Call. That was amazing. Yeah, Lobo teleports to do it, but RNG really wanted to fight. KT's comp is not about the flank teleport like most teams are from Korea. It's Jace, so they very much want defensive teleport or Jace just matching Camille. So both of them having no teleport is a big advantage to KT because the 4v4 is a lot more true for KT than a 5v5. They don't have to respect the Hextech ultimate and they can disengage with the skipping, the hopping and skipping of the Callista and specifically the Alistair to disengage. So with a disengage situation and now return to the Baron setups, they're very happy with how this worked out, KT Rolston. Yeah, now actually gonna get full vision control over this top side of the river. MLXG. Not moving. Yeah, it could be in trouble, takes a lot of damage. Pawn was, the, of Pawn was the kid that snickered too early <laughs> in hide and seek. Yep. Shao actually got so much value out of that rocket. It was one of the most satisfying rockets I have ever seen. If there's a lull in this game, which there probably won't be, I'd like to see a slow motion replay. Okay, Master setting himself up. KT move themselves back. So it's 200 gold now the lead for KT Rolster. This is so incredibly close. Slight turret lead for KT and they do have two Mountain Drakes. But RNG only need to take that last remaining out of turret on the bottom side and they will be ahead in gold. And the vision game right now is so important for KT. Not having flash on score or Marta means that only the Fates call gives them ranged initiation to allow the Alistair to get in the back line. And fighting now is what they want. They have the items, they have the Knight's Vow, Ninja Tabi duo, and the two items on Deft to win team fights. If Deft gets into the middle of the enemy team and can't be focused down instantly, it should be a team fight victory for KT. But without control wards and basically chilling in a control ward because you're need a vision advantage and also have to respect the tremor sense to really get the engage you want. Given that's already a two point plan and unrealistic to be able to be made with any reliability, it's very tough for Katie to force the fights they want. And when they see Camille in side lanes, Corky in side lanes, they get worried about the scaling and that's why you see them just returning to Baron and wanting RNG to come to them. Wow. Well. Just clearing our vision, not able to quite find an engage that they're looking for. Black is done for Smeb. Should help him a little bit in this 1v1, but Titanic Hydra is there for Let Me, and he's continuing to build damage. I wonder whether that dagger is going to turn into a Blade of the Ruin King of his own, committing to that possible 1v1. The Shahu has the package available. They have more summoner spells available, and Shahu's hit that second item spike, or third theoretically, because you could imagine that Sorcerer's Shoe is also a pretty big item spike. Every single item he picks up, but the Infinity Edge is probably the biggest. Especially against a team that has Ninja Tabis no more when it comes to armor counts. Yeah. We'll rip through and the magic damage, sure, is the higher part of the quotient, but there's Spectre's Cal, a little bit going on for Mada, not much for other members. So when it comes to Corky Crits, that's something that KT Moment you draft Jace, really isn't going to be able to itemize against two with any reliability. It's one of the reasons Corky is so strong is the mixed damage, especially being high on the magic quotient where you don't get as much MR per level as you get armor per level. And KT being forced into the mid lane, just wave clearing. 
I don't think loading gold onto Pawn is enough of a boon to allow RNG to skip past Deft being just unassailable in team fights on two item and a half Callista. And RNG, they can push around. They have Tremor Sense for the safety to play in both sides of the map. We're waiting for KT to go Rambo, and I guess they feel like they need their flashes because for now, they've given up map control, and happily, MLXG can just start the Infernal Drake. Yeah, Infernal Drake means so much to RNG's composition as well with three huge damage dealers as well as new and improved Rek'Sai doing a little bit more damage. MLXG going to be able to lock that one down. Still, the mountains are going to be important, but Smeb has to go towards the bottom side of the map to clear out that minion wave. And KT, once again, in that 4-1 scenario, which as this game goes on, is somewhere they're going to want to be less and less. Okay, let's take the deep breath. Well, maybe we won't. Okay, Xiaohu is going to take a heck of a lot of damage. That Chaos Storm is following in perfect. Watch Hex the flashes. Store, giving it so much more speed. Yeah, the flash is going to come in as Ming. They're just looking to transition. Pawn, oh, he's so hungry for blood right now. Wants to get something other than deaths onto his scoreline. And that's the reason why he kept the chase up. The movement speed of the Chaos Storm was enough that even him threatening to flash Q was enough to force the preeminent flash from Zhao Hu. That does mean Corky may be more capturable by a displacement effect. Now you can cast Predict the Valkyrie and be able to bounce the Corky into a team. So big victory gotten there. And just waiting in the brush for Pawn. Still, okay. we take that deep breath. All the flashes are back up. Bar Corky's. AT now really do have the items and also the go button to make something happen. They have an obvious target in the Corky. Jace sitting in the side lane. The moment they see Camille and that Gragas and Marta on the Alistair can walk down and get the control worlds around Baron. That is kind of the flare point of this game. The game will be decided by the first Baron dance. I think whichever team picks it up should have the tools to actually force a massive advantage. Well, KT is actually grouping up as four, looking to try and get that pick. Xiaohu aggressively positioned, actually, as Pawn's clearing out vision. No, it's there. There's the control ward. This is the time. What will KT do? Jace has already been called. Even though teleports are up, both are around. KT start to back away. All that time invested in vision may just be wasted. Yeah, I'm actually looking to try and make sure they're as strong as possible for this next fight. But RNG, five members here. They may just rush this one down. I don't know whether they knew that the backs did come in, but RNG now clear out the vision. Should mean that KT will have enough time to make it back to this pit. Yeah, there wasn't enough advanced vision to have full information. Full information, I agree. You start the Baron and say, huh, thanks for the, thanks for the leash, thanks for the uh, extra time, we'll just take it down. In this yeah, case, the welcome committee or something sure. like that. Sure. Putting down a flag on it. Yeah. For it to only to be claimed by RNG, but they back away. Like you say, they value getting the Phantom Dancer. It was the Phantom Dancer, they have shoulders. Here we go. There's the flash. They're looking for Ming, who does get some time by himself. Flashes, grand egg entrance to exit the fight, but the quickness did have to be invested, and the flash there as well. Rakan, his engage doesn't need to be respected. Now KT using that as an opportunity to go for this Baron. Their secure is massive as there's the Fate's Call. Marta actually they flashes Rek'Sai. after MLXG, but he's not going to be able he's to create enough position. Dis distance. And Marta, the ultimate is down, but he should fall. And that is going to be the pick going in favor of RNG. Ah, Marta called the go button, went over the wall, was completely owned by MLXG getting the tunnel out, and thus he couldn't get the headbutt to kill the smite. Now it's 5v4. Yeah, Lemmy's going to jump his way in there. Smith does a fair bit of damage, but there's the knock-up under Scorpion. Does a lot of damage in the front line. They do trade it, as now the curtain calls picking up the kills. Death. He's trying to dance around, let me, looks for it, gets the kill as Pawn flashes himself to safety. It's a three for two, but jungle is dead on both sides, and I can imagine RNG don't want to go back to Baron now. Yeah, five foot five v four goes two for two after the pick onto the Alistair. So KT do spare Mata the embarrassment of his one play being what led to the Baron, potentially the tide changing for RNG. Still no one is able to inch forward. Still, we have the relative parity between the comps, but as the time keeps ticking, the ambient gold starts to stack up. The moment and time for KT starts to go away. They just want to take down Rakan, pop him instantly, but they don't have massive burst, burst when Pawn isn't there. Pawn was in the top side. Cluster needs that bit of extra time to get a pick. They turn on to Baron, and they see MLXG, and they think even over the wall, they can get the hit, but MLXG, is able to just uh, tunnel out and just knock up specifically Alistair to stop him from being able to headbutt Rek'Sai over the wall. There isn't anyone there to capitalize. They give up the Alistair for free. Now it's 5v4. 
And that's why even though it's a three for two overall, RNG look for bonus exit picks and a Baron from getting the smite away and be able to turn this, but Pawn is in position to clean up. Let me, thinks he can even from below half health take down Deft and damn is he close as Pawn does the rest of the work. They get a lot of flashes. The next fight will be fought with very few summoners. But Katie Rolster, they gave up the Baron there. I think the game does go the way of RNG. That hasn't happened yet, but okay, fate's call. Yeah, that's going to come down there. Looking for this one more time. Actually, let me in possible trouble as the Hextech Ultimatum does go down. But look at this damage. Deft is going to pick up that kill, and it's probably just going to extend from there. Chaos Storm was invested, so KT used a lot of cooldowns, but that could be just the pick that they were looking for. Yep. Taking down the top laner without teleport notice means they have even more than the 40 seconds of the death timer. They turn on to Baron, they don't even have a control ward for it. They put it down now. The vision is being canceled. The Rex side, it's 5v4 again. Yeah, jumps into the pit, just not gonna look at the Baron there as well as he throws out the ult. It is gonna be Marta falling as the Baron still alive, but the kills are coming for KT. It is gonna be Callista locking down the Baron, of course, as Y4 has to flash. Deft wants to take him down as well as Score is gonna get rid of Xiaohu. And Y4 says, well, I'm gonna at least get some minions before I inevitably fall down and waste some time there of KT. Uh, KT played the ultimate dangerous game. They focused on the kills instead of the Baron. So the Rend was used early and Baron was sitting there to be grasped at 800 HP. But MLXG died fairly early. Now we're just watching Score and Smeb clear up who's going to take down Y4. It's probably going to be Smeb. Yep, so this guy gets that last auto attack and Smeb's going to go back to base. Empowered Recall to try and buy some more items. Mortal Reminder finished for Deft as well as the Phantom Dancer. you got so many things coming. And your Let's eyes were again. obviously trained on the Baron. It got lower and lower, but KT, they weren't focused on the Baron. This, the Rend was used early to try and get kills. It was actually on cooldown, so it wasn't there for the secure. Turned around, but because RNG were the four in this case, and there was just enough health on score to peel away, they were able to get in there. They pick up both objectives, Atlas. The Mountain Drake meant that the speed was fast enough to not just give up their health bars trying to claim it. They could turn, they do turn, and now RNG have to deal with a barrened up KT Rolster, and even Jace. Picked up a lot of exit kills in that scenario. As Speaking of exit kills... Yeah, they're actually looking for MLXG here. Just gets cast. Because he's going to jump down, but Smeb just looking to kite this one out. The CC's there, and Smeb is going to grab that kill. All too easy, as MLXG is the largest form of initiation aside from Ming, and that's going to spell the end of this turret, and possibly more here for KT. It feels like exactly what you said, that first Baron so incredibly important for both of these teams, and KT is capitalizing. Base is broken, and this inhibitor will follow very quickly. It's, 30 seconds on MLXG. I mean, it's Baron buff, Jace, Callista, double Mountain Drake, Good and God. a goddamn Lich Bane on Pawn. <laughs> they have everything to delete structures. They can dive as well. Speaking of dive, I want to take down Ming. He'll flash away. Ming, this game, has not been fired from yesterday, interrupting Barons and getting big initiation. He's been well held. Well, we do have the curtain call coming in, just looking to try and delay KT. They wanted to get out of the way and take down this minion wave. A couple of bullets are going to be held on to. Score just eliminates any reason for that bullet to even be fired at. Here we go! There is the cast to come back. Ming was getting into quickness mode and then just popped with, with Pawn's burst damage, which is gigantic right now. Inner falls down. Now the next inhibitor turret will go as well. KT, this is the decisive play this team is capable of. And another ult. There's the headbutt pole. This is oh, a poor oh, man. Oh. Uh, Kalista Rakan coming in there, and Marta's making it look good as Let Me has to flash his way out. MLXG was alive for, I believe, about 12 seconds until he's inevitably taken down. Another sh shock blast is going to erupt the Rek'Sai, and now inhibitor number two and possibly the game for KT Rolster. Yeah, they still are four men strong. Corky popped Victor, but otherwise had to get out of dodge. They're going with the teleport here. There's still members alive on RNG, but they're going to try and end the game. Yep, so the Y4 and MLXG to die here. And Xiaohu does a lot of damage. Has another one of those item spikes to score. He's taking a fair bit. Xiaohu healthy and getting damage in, but now Deft looking for that Rend kill. Looking for the Rend sets, as it were. Shock Blast not going to find the targets. And KT playing with respect against RNG. Yeah, maybe we can breathe, says KT Rolster. They realize that even though the Baron was the centerpiece to ending the game, they got the Baron, they ruined the base, not one inhibitor, but two. Now they have a gold lead as well. They can freshly sharpen. Whatever scaling RNG were looking for is going to be pretty irrelevant. 
the fact that KT will just play as five. No longer is something like Let Me's ability to split push going to be a factor. It's now completely thrown out the window. It's only going to be about the 5v5 and death with both inherent and passive types of tankiness with his team actually playing around the Callista. No longer does he have to worry about Callista's ruining his day. He's now able to frontline to some degree. They'll take an Ocean Drake for no reason at all. Yep, and look to end the game. actually take down MLXG here at the same time as Deft just pulls Marta away, wants Where to you going? take down this Camille. It's all too easy as well as MLXG's gonna join them. The flash from Deft gets himself over and he's just bouncing around this party, but can they take him out? No, they can't! As there's the Void Rush, it's around. still not enough! Deft is gonna take both of them down. It's gonna be Score that claims the kill, but this guy's Callista, so, so good now. You heard the roar of the crowd, oh. they get the two, because they want more, they just want a bouncy castle, but the package allows Koki to live, at least for the start. Yeah, but the health bar's still so huge on the side of KT. Well, Smith, not so much, that's a massive crit coming out of Xiaohu. Curtain Call comes in once again, looking for depth, he's bouncing around. These bullets from long range should be able to let RNG breathe for a moment, but the super creeps are an inevitable prospect. They just won't be able to get around if KT stay here. The heals coming through from the Alistair are not to be trifled with. The redemption through already. He's just doing huge AoE heals after the last buck. You don't see late game ask that much. Is he up the corky crits? <laughs> Still pretty insane. That is silly. Has himself those double zeal items as well as the infinity edge. That is crazy. So third inhibitor is going to fall down and KT Gonna back away, try and get some health bars back. No Nexus explosion yet. They rely on the fact that they have those three inhibitors down. Back away, could just get the next Baron. It spawns in a minute 25, and RNG with their relatively low wave clear, finding a way to push out three waves of super minion and contest a Baron. Probably gonna be on the side of impossibility. A walk up for now, but only for a few seconds will RNG actually have the latitude to leave their base. Yeah, we are going to see this fight one more time. Look at how much coverage so Alistair aggressive. gets with the Fates Call here. It's a roughly 2,500 range head by Pulverize. Thank you very much. And to let me spread it, lives a lot longer than you'd expect when Rek'Sai was there to start closing the distance. Death Force immeasurably low. And the AoE heal for 328 after the change in longer Harvard for teammates. You I can't proc it on demand. I know, you can't proc it on demand, Atlas. He didn't have summoner heal. <laughs> he needed some minions to die and some damage to go through to be able to proc the heal. And it actually has come up big trumps. The late game Alistair passive of all things. <laughs> And he took a dragon with a, uh, a trample as well. This guy is making Alistair do things that he shouldn't, as there's the headbutt pulverized. Speaking of the Alistair... This time Vibes in the back line, though. Yeah, he's trying to look for it as Ming is going to fall down, but has he accomplished enough? His pawn has fallen down. Def, he's unstoppable, though, as he's dancing around. MLXG going to fall. Look at all the health that he's getting back from this one. Let me jumps himself gets down. Him. Yeah, the Guardian Angel is there as the Flash from Marta gets himself out of the way of death. As now Smurf's gonna make his way back in, jumps on top of Xiao, who scores still there with full health, by the way. He just dived a little bit further forward, and now KT Rolster, they're gonna ignore Let Me unless he goes a little bit too far forward and take down the Nexus and win their first international match as this roster. Man